I think the answers are out there. A new push to uncover answers in a cold case in New Bedford, 26 years after a woman's body was found floating in the water. And now the district attorney is beefing up efforts to identify her. NBC10 I-Team reporter Tamara Sikarsik investigates the puzzling death of Pope's Island, Jane Doe. We could see the bag in the water. That was what I remember of the scene. It's the morning of October 30th, 1996. New Bedford detective Richard Ferreira gets a phone call. A maintenance worker had discovered the body of a woman floating near Pope's Island Marina. When we got down there, we, uh, we found out that they had found the female uh, wrapped in plastic, completely wrapped in plastic. And she, they found her floating uh, in, the, in the harbor. Her body covered in green garbage bags and a white and teal wool blanket, the kind typically found on fishing boats. I, I did see her face, but it was, it was evident that she had been in the water, you know, for some time. An autopsy determined she had died two days earlier, but had likely been in the water for about 24 hours. She was badly beaten with blunt force trauma to the head and 12 gunshot wounds. Whoever did that had time on their hands to do it. So what would make you think that Maybe they were already on the water, you know? But before police can catch the killer, they need to identify the victim who to this day is only known as Pope's Island Jane Doe. The, uh, again, inability to identify the person adds more mystery to it and tragedy, if you will, because again, without identifying her, her it's just very difficult, uh, if not impossible, to locate and identify the perpetrator. Bristol County District Attorney Thomas Quinn was the on-call prosecutor the day her body was found. Would you say that this one has stuck with you because of that? I won't forget it. Years later, his office is now ramping up efforts to put a name to the face. Based on jewelry and dental records, there was some indication that the woman, I think was in her early 30s, uh, may have been from Eastern Europe. It was unclear whether, you know, the, the individual at first lived in the area or might have been transient in the sense of traveling with somebody. A search of visa and immigration records have come up empty, but now investigators have a new tool, forensic genetic genealogy. Interpol, that international agency, is being used to see if there can be some way of identifying her, also through the FBI, so that's in progress uh, as we speak. Once a genetic profile is created from the victim's DNA, the FBI can feed it into public genealogy databases, a method that could connect Jane Doe back to her family, potentially closing a case that investigators have never been able to forget. It's kind of haunting, you know, because you think of those people often, uh, you try not to, but it, that type, those types of investigations become part of your life, you know, because you really want to solve them. You know, the people out there that are hurting, and you, you want to at least let them, you know, put their memory to sleep. Pope's Island Jane Doe is one of several homicide victims in Bristol County who have never been identified. We'll take you inside of another case next Wednesday on NBC 10 News starting at 5. For the NBC 10i team, I'm Tamara Sikarzik.